Are we all cured? We got the fucking. We, we, we've got to do the fucking shit that we need for fucking uh, dog abuse. No, 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 Mixed with a little bit of hog sweat gives you the corn grill experience when you absolutely, positively must repel ladies. This is the fragrance for you. Denial. Worst intro ever. Lauren, his denial is undeniable. It is his defense mechanism. It gives his life purpose. He takes it to an entirely different level than anything I've seen personally. It is a defense mechanism. And basically you ignore the fabric of reality. This is to avoid feeling anxiety. And I want to say something right off the bat. Some of what people mistake for narcissism from him is denial. His thought that he's attractive and that he can sing and that... I told, we talked about isolation, we talked about a lot of other stuff, but if he admits he has any faults, if he admits that he's not good at stuff, his reality comes crumbling down. He knows what he's done. He knows what's ahead of him. So the point I'm making is, Lawrence's denial is interwoven into every piece of his life, every belief he has, every goal, every dream, If you take away (laughs) that denial and he has to base all of that on reality, he will realize none of it is achievable. Everything he ever believed is a lie and he will have to face it. 51 years of probable denial. Well, not 51 because he was a baby, but you know what I mean. Denial isn't something that has to be huge all of the time. It's not something that has to be a major part of your life. It means you're basically struggling to accept something, something that may be stressful or quite honestly overwhelming because we all have that in our life. In the short term, this defense mechanism can have a useful purpose. It'll give you time to adjust, but with Lauren, we know it is time to move on to whatever's next whatever his next distraction is, and usually that's a person. Denial for the rest of us, we just want time to adapt and to accept stages of grief. But Lorne, he's taken that one stage and he has completely built his life around it. It stops him from making a change, even from addressing any of his problems, I guarantee you, Lauren is the guy who needs someone to tell him to do something. He knows what is right. He could do it on his own, but he's not going to do it because he wants someone else to help him. Help in his mind, but in actuality, he wants someone else to make him, to push him. Here's what Freud said. Hopefully I've got the right version of this. Refusing to acknowledge upsetting facts about external events and internal ones, including memories, thoughts, and feelings. Pretty straightforward there. Some of the signs that Lorne is in denial, he finds ways to justify his behavior. We've seen it time and time again. He blames everyone else. He talks about, well, you made me mad. And he kind of laughs about it when he's like, yeah, who's pissed off? Blaming outside forces for causing the problem. He has negative consequences in his life for his actions, but he is persistent in his behavior. He went back to jail because he could not follow the terms of his probation. We talked about his constant, oh, in the future, it's good if you just come out and see me after nine months of screaming and abusing. He's going to address the problem trying to quit, just come and slow. Addressing the problem in the future, that's something he likes to promise, and that's what people in denial do. He avoids thinking about it. He always 
dodges the question or tries to redirect the conversation. Why do you keep pressuring me about it? This is when he was talking to Ramona and he didn't he didn't want to own up to it. Didn't want to own up to it with Winnie or Debbie. Just insert name here. He doesn't want to own up to it. I know he didn't own up to his mother and she probably just didn't want to hear about it and he kept talking and talking about it until finally his mom was probably like, oh, okay, yeah, I know. And then he could walk away and say, yeah, see? See, mom, you knew. You knew I didn't really want to do it. But another side effect of it is you feel hopeless and helpless. We've all been in denial. Hell, I'm probably in denial right now about something. Again, refusing to talk about the problem is number one, number two, number three through 10. And Lauren, he's three through 10 all the way. You know what I mean? The top 10 things about it are refusing to talk about the problem, and that's Lauren. When you talk about denial, it goes with some mental health conditions. Of course, I told you Lauren is bipolar too, but more importantly, alcohol use disorder. Why do you think there's a need for intervention so much? Because when you have a substance abuse problem, which Lauren does, and look at his past, my past, look at everything that's happened in his past. So he's not only denying what he's done, he's denying what he's doing. That's a cocktail for, as we say all the time, disaster. Something else we could talk about, but we're not going to, is narcissistic personality disorder. That's like a 90 minute video, so we're gonna skip it. Really, as we said before, it doesn't matter whatever they're facing, whatever they're dealing with, it's a defense mechanism. Again, to avoid facing reality, especially reality of their condition. Lauren's drinking, his rage, his inability to control his impulses, his compulsive behavior, his obsession, and denial, it just allows him to keep doing what he's doing, what he wants to do, without ever addressing any of his problems. Yeah, well, that's not really denial. That, you know what, we're not going into that. But it, it can help, if you can help denial. It's definitely an assistance. Lauren thinks because he can drink and not get a hangover or drink and he used to have a job that, you know what, it's not that bad. I'm just fine. I can function like a normal member of society. Another use for denial, very common use, is when you hurt somebody else's feelings or you wrong them, you just refuse to think about it. You try to find a way to blame the other person for your behavior I mean, hell, you might even say, I wouldn't have said that if she hadn't been acting that way. How many times have we heard that from Lauren Lynn Armstrong? All day, every day, every week of every month of every year. That is the life of Lauren Lynn Armstrong. Sometimes I wonder if Lauren knows he's abnormal. I wonder if he knows that he has something wrong in his head. He might but he also knows it requires work and he doesn't want to face the problem and he doesn't want to go and get the help and support he needs just like AA, just like the classes, just like everything else that should help him. I'm sure he tells himself, I'll get through this, I'll get over it, it's not really that bad. Well, when you're in that much denial, it's gonna interfere with your treatment. Not that denial is always a bad thing. If you're in a tough spot, and you're trying, to, you're trying to power through it, it can, get, it can buy you time until you come to grips with things. I'm not saying it's all bad. We do it. It's in our nature. The problem is Lauren's denial, Lauren's denial stops him from ever coming to grips with what he's done, from where he's at, from what he's doing, and how he's behaving. A bipolar two person Think about this. Think about how bipolar 2 might affect your life. The behavior is heightened. The things you do affect others in a negative way and then those memories persist and then you, your denial increases and you try to block those out. 
the longer that happens, the more problems you're going to have. And Lauren has a lot of problems. We've seen it. It just keeps going the same course. He stays the same course. The rage gets a little more (laughs) every day when he's dealing with someone because the walls come down. Now, his denial wall, it goes higher and higher. But his inhibitions, they're gone. And he just starts going mental. And he can tell himself, I'm doing this because of the compounded... How did I, How should I say this? Because of the consistent agitations of Winnie. They're just piling up. And it's finally coming out in me. And I'm just done with dealing with it. That's why I called her an evil little cunt hole. And that's why I'm screaming and yelling and throwing things and overreacting because I've been wronged. Oh, wait, did I behave? Uh, uh, Let me block that out. All of my behavior, that didn't happen. My drinking, that didn't happen. Think about all the times you hear, hey, it's me, I'm sorry about this night. It's not the way I want to act it. Roy told me I was being, he said, Roy said he was being an asshole. And then he tries to walk it back. And he says, Roy told me I was being a a bit of an asshole. He tries to lessen it. He almost accepted the fact that he was an asshole, but he walked it back. Overcoming denial is not easy. It's not, especially when the nature of the problem or the size of the problem, the scope, when it's too large to handle by yourself, and we know Lauren will never handle it, and if he did try to handle it, it would be by himself, because I'm sure Lauren thinks he knows more than anyone else, I know how to fix my problems. If I had a problem, I would fix it. He needs time and he needs support. We talked about his need for psychotherapy and he also needs support groups. And every time a support group is involved, he just shuts down. The most help he's ever received has been from Tiffany when she was playing the character of Debbie. And I think even then, It wasn't helping as much as we hoped. We know he just wanted to get into her pants. Here's why denial will always be a problem for Lauren. Because it's something you have to recognize. Even if he had a therapist, which we know he had a therapist, and he only heard you couldn't say no when it came to why he left Maine. We know he ran from Maine because he stole money. But he says he couldn't say no. And he's talking about the story he told the therapist. We've mentioned this before. That he gave his siblings money. And it really hurt him. Well, Lauren, that's because you couldn't say no. So Lauren took that. And this is a prime example of picking and choosing for him. And how he bolsters, how he boosts his denial. With these little chosen statements that he pulls from the bigger picture. He would have to think about why he's afraid to face what he's done. And he would also have to figure out the consequences of not dealing with this problem. And he can't do it. That's why he went to prison. That's why the judge told him, if you're in here again, I'm going to throw away the key. They had to tell him, you have to stop drinking, Lauren, or you're going back to prison. Now, if you think the one person who should be able to help him is his mom, this woman that he puts up on a pedestal, treats like a god almost. But when he talks to her, he doesn't want to hear anything she's saying. He wants to talk about, yeah, well, you and your diabetes and whatever else. Again, Debbie, who I'm sure he considered, they were close. Maybe a close friend or loved one, you know, that role. Maybe they fit that role. She gave him honest and an objective perspective, tried to work with him on identifying his denial (laughs) on his distorted thoughts, anything that might be contributing to why his life sucks so bad and why his denial is preventing him to feel the crushing weight of the stress and anxiety that should be there, knowing what he's gotten himself into and where he's at. People develop these unconscious defense mechanisms 
This is to address things that we know are false, what we tell ourselves and what's actually happening. There's reality, society, biology, all of that stuff. It's tugging at the very fabric of our being. Relationships with others, with ourselves. We have so many things affecting how we feel and act and think. Life is hard. And sometimes we do need defense mechanisms. Lauren has taken it to an entirely different level, as I said before. Because of what he did with the sting. Because of what he did with real victims before that. Because of how he's treated everyone. He knows there's something wrong with him. And we've all stated that he has to know there's something wrong with him. But he's built up this nice little maze that he can walk around in and he can ignore everything on the peripheral. He can just forget about it. He can just take that path that he made to get him to the exit without ever having to look or see who he really is, to take a look in the mirror, to look into his own eyes and say out loud what he's got going for him and what he doesn't. There are many types of denial, negation. This is when somebody simply refuses to believe something's true. I mean, Lauren has never actually claimed that it never happened, but he has denied the reason. He has denied the method. Then you've got denial of impact. This is someone who refuses to admit the negative effects or outcomes or an action or situation. Lauren claims he didn't do anything wrong. And everything that he's ever done that hurts someone, he denies. This is denial of impact. Again, denial of awareness. This is Mr. Penis. This is when someone refuses to admit that they knew what they were doing, or even if their actions had consequences, or better yet, even though their actions had consequences. This is Lorne claiming that I never meant any harm by it. And what he's referring to there is, well, she was a 13-year-old girl, so she was alone. I knew she was lonely, and I just wanted to be there for her and talk to her. Affected ignorance is another form of denial. This is when someone refuses to believe that something is true, even though they know it's true. And they can even provide evidence that they know it's true. A good example I read one time was, if someone tells somebody that there are no more cookies left in this jar, and then they say, I don't care, I refuse to believe you. See, my friends, that is the way Lauren Armstrong thinks. We talked about how you can make him think, or how can you reassure him that you're telling him the truth, and you can't, because he only believes what he wants to believe. When someone doesn't believe him, he'll try to take control again, and he'll say, well, I know there weren't any cookies in the jar, because I ate them all, and I know how I feel when I've eaten those cookies. This is the same as Mr. Penis when he says, well, I wasn't that drunk. You know, I know what it feels like when I'm drunk, so I got in the truck and drove. I was just fine. And when Lauren says he had a six-pack, we know he had an 18-pack. He will never change. Lauren is the master of a form of denial called word salad. This is when he denies crap by coming up with random words and phrases that have no connection to anything you're discussing. Evasion and distraction. These are common techniques employed by the owner and proprietor of the trailer of failure. And there are many reasons for his denial. And some people legitimately, they feel that they don't deserve to be happy. But they also feel that it's unfair that other people have everything that they want. Who does that sound like? They believe their own lies and exaggerations about situations, which is why everything that Lawrence ever told himself about the sting, what led up to it, what happened, how he treated these women, everything he's done in his life, he just believes it, his own exaggerations and lies. I used to think he had a coping mechanism built in because of the amount of loss he's had in his life. But when it comes down to it, 
I don't think he's lost a lot. I think anything that he's lost has been at his own by his own hand. It's been his own doing. This is why I think Lorne gets some of his terminology and some of his statements from a psychotherapist, from someone he's had to talk to. Because basically denial is based on the event, the severity of the event or situation you were in. Now think about this. Your emotional state at the time. I was messed up at the time. Also on his own values, opinions, and beliefs. I don't really know what Lauren believes because he lies so much it's hard to tell. I do know that his denial is based a lot on the fact that he feels threatened by what he's been denying all of these years. I'm going to use an analogy that might be a little rough. If a woman is sexually assaulted, she may deny it or say it never happened because she doesn't want people to think she's some kind of whore. It's real. It happens. And sometimes we forget that the victims still suffer even after the crime. Why I'm bringing that up is because Lauren, I think part of his denial is that he doesn't want everybody else to know what he's done and we know this. He knows the implications of when people find out what he's done, of what they will think of him and what he will have to face when looking at himself. To rehabilitate him would take a lot. You've got to educate him. You have to make him aware of what he's doing about his denial. You would have to have somebody there 24-7 supporting and encouraging him. And you'd have to make him face his reality. But with Lorne, you'd have to wear kid gloves. Explain to him, hey man, this is how your denial is affecting your life in a negative way. You'd also have to give him some coping skills for dealing with all of those repressed emotions, his shame, his guilt. I think they are there, but I think they are buried deep down. He cannot face who he is. Lauren's denial even involves what he says. That's not what I meant when he says something stupid. Well, that's not what I meant. Even though he meant that statement, he will try to walk it back. Lorne will deny t- down to the smallest molecule in his life anything that could reflect negatively on him. Lorne can't admit where he's at in his life. He can't admit that everything he's done has been a massive failure. And economically, financially for him, he does these scam things, he falls for all of them. He can't admit that he is in dire straits. So he will latch on to anything to make him feel better. I bet that whole scam thing made him feel so empowered and so important. He was about to become rich. Let me forget about all of the desperation that's in my life because I got this big thing on the horizon. It's part of the delusion when I speak about this guy. He is delusional. But delusional is when they believe things that aren't true. Denial is when they believe things that aren't true to protect themselves, to deflect blame, guilt, everything we've talked about. He's so gullible. The whole Xavier Von Erk thing, he will believe just about anything. And in that way, I think he is delusional. To sum it up, Lawrence denial is a problem. Because of the fact that he's still in denial, it means he is not mentally ready to accept or even work on the, who he is, what he's done, what he needs to do. His denial is so strong that it's going to take a lot of help, a lot of effort, and a lot of support. And he's about to lose all of his support. Roy has apparently moved away. Tony Fama is dead, R.I.P., I don't know if his mom's dead or not, but she's got to be close if she's not already. I don't know who that leaves in his life. He will have to find somebody else to attach himself to. Somebody else that can be, I guess, someone to leech off for him. The only people he will have left 
will be the state. When that happens, Lauren would definitely be better off in prison because at least there he would eat, have a place to stay, a place to sleep. Someone could keep an eye on him and keep him from doing more and more stupid things. He could escape his financial problems because he's in prison. I know there are some special situations and circumstances that he could use and abuse coming from that. But when all he has left is the state as a support system, I don't know what's going to happen. But I do know that his denial will be in place until he either cracks or dies. I know this was long. I love you guys. I will see you in the next one.